Hey everyone, in the next 15 minutes or so, I'm gonna talk about pre-processing CAD models for a simulation. More often than not, SOLIDWORKS users will bypass using simulation due to what I've now dubbed the CAD complexity syndrome, when really this is an easily diagnosed and treated condition. So let's get started using some standard SOLIDWORKS tools that don't even require license of simulation. After watching this video, you'll be able to boil down those complex CAD creations to a sim-happy model. Let's take a look. One of the first things you'll want to do when using large assemblies or complex assemblies in simulation is create a new data set. Under the File dropdown, you'll find Pack and Go, where here we can add a prefix or suffix to the name. Attaching these prefix or suffix to all the file names that are referenced in the assembly and saving this out will create a new data set that's no longer linked to the production model. Another common technique as well is to create a configuration, maybe call this simulation or in this case FEA, and we can use this to detune and simplify the model. The configuration method, if it's a little bit less complex, I'm going to use it for this demonstration, but I recommend the pack and go. Now we have a lot of stuff we don't need in here. I can use techniques like suppressing to remove those. The only thing with suppressing is that it takes a while, especially in larger assemblies, to remove the model. What I've been using is a technique of just hiding the components out. It's a lot faster and I'll show you where the downstream benefits come into play. Using selection sets like a left to right, which will grab anything inside of the box, and a right to left selection, which will grab anything it touches, lets me quickly hide out multiple components. Using a hover over and hitting the tab key is also a fast way for me to hide out single components, larger components, or just individualize each component that I want to remove from the assembly. Under the selection drop down window, you'll see there's an option to select by component size. Using this in a percentage, I can grab all of the tiny little guys that aren't going to affect my overall simulation run, select them in one group, and hide them out. Using the hide method is a really fast way to start to detune and simplify this complex assembly. Just like we use configurations to create a variation of the model and the assembly itself, we can use display states to retain this information on what's shown and what's hidden. Multiple display states will let you pre-process and set these up for different scenarios in simulation. If you would still prefer to suppress the components, you can use the select hidden at this point grab all of the hidden components and do one suppression to get rid of them all. My recommendation, skip the configuration with suppressed components and just use the display state that's tied to it. Here what we can do is just do a file, save as, and use a SOLIDWORKS part to generate out a multi-body part for our simulation. What you'll see is that everything that's been hidden or suppressed isn't saved to that new part file. This makes the workflow from reducing the model down by hiding to creating a new part for simulation really, really fast. From here we may have to do some additional simplification per part. In this instance I've got a plate with a bunch of really tiny holes that may or may not cause issues with meshing. We don't need these holes, the smaller ones that is, at least for the initial analysis. So I'm going to use some of my best friends in SOLIDWORKS and that's the direct editing tab and some of their features. You'll also find a lot of these involved are going to be right on the analysis prep tab. But indirect editing gives me options to take and just simply delete face. I'm working in a multi-body part with no features, no big deal. Using direct editing lets me just select and delete, and just like that, SOLIDWORKS patches it up for me. Now, if you prefer to stay directly in the assembly instead of creating a new part, we can still use the direct editing tools. Simply edit the part, start to apply those direct edits to any of the features you want to remove, and just like that, we're ready to go. If you haven't created a pack and go of this, you may also want to create configurations of each subcomponent that reference FEA or simulation or however you want to word it, just to make sure we're not messing around too much with that production model. What if there's stuff that we can't see or doesn't pop out at us? 
In the Analysis Preparation tab, and also within the Search command, you can take a look for the Simplify tool. This tool actually will search all throughout that exact part relative to a certain size parameter that you set and show you where you might have some issues with it. You can either suppress directly from the interface or investigate further and use those direct editing tools to remove those features as needed. When an assembly comes your way and you've created that new variation of it for a simulation, one thing you should always check is interference. This is another area that's going to cause problems when creating mesh. Under the Evaluate tab in SOLIDWORKS, there's a Check Interference tool that will actually pinpoint and highlight all the regions of overlapping components. Now what I like to do is take quick measurements here and take a strategic adjustment on how we can change this. Without having to dig into the component feature itself, I can use those direct editing tools we saw earlier to simply do an offset face and get this to fit nicely. Another really slick option that you have besides using the direct editing tools is the ability to take the actual overlapping component and use that to do a Boolean subtraction to remove out the geometry that's causing issues in the mesh. So for this, we can use a cavity feature. You'll find this in the insert feature dropdown, or I like to search for it. What we're gonna do is just edit this component in the context of the assembly, and then select on the component we want to use for the Boolean subtraction. Just like that, we create an in-context relationship to that other component in the assembly, and we have no more overlapping features. Once we've gotten rid of all of the interferences in this assembly, the next thing to do here is decide on what type of elements we want to use for simulation. Here what I want to do is actually generate new geometry that's going to captivate the geometry that we have here, but preset it up for simulation. So to do so, I'm going to just create a new part and insert that into the assembly. Inside of here we can edit the virtual part. Then, using a simple surface offset, we can start creating mid-plane surfaces for all of the thin components in this assembly. Simply grabbing the face and setting half of the thickness of that plate and making sure to offset into the plate itself, we're starting to already create a new FEA model and it's going to save us a lot of time on the front end versus having to do these surfaces in simulation itself. If you have parts inside of your assembly that are a little bit more complex than just a single flat face, use your right click menu to grab your select tangency. This will grab all tangent faces, making this operation quick and easy. So let's see where we're at. I'm going to open up this part that I've been creating and now we can see how it's coming to life. All of these surface bodies are going to come in really handy when setting up our shell mesh in simulation. There are a few other techniques that we can use inside of here as well for components that don't necessarily meet the needs of a shell mesh. So how do I bring that into my new part? Simple. We're going to just create a sketch on that plane and using a convert entity and grabbing the internal contours, we can generate a sketch, extrude this out, and over on our part that's used for simulation, we see we have a new component that's going to be all set to use solid elements on. You may run into a situation where you have a lot of components that will need to be meshed with a solid mesh. So instead of creating an in-context relation, creating that sketch and extruding it out, what I'll do here is, after I've created my surface part, is do a save as and grab a SOLIDWORKS part file, grab all the components and generate that out. This will create my new FEA part with everything. Surface bodies, solid bodies, all ready to go for simulation. The last thing I need to do is just decide on what I want to keep. So again, using the direct editing, we can take and delete bodies and start to get rid of the solid bodies, leaving the shell behind. Now for our last model, we have this massive truss design with a staircase wrapping around it. 
When I first looked at this, I went to create a new study, and it took hours for it to chug along based on the fact that we have so many components. For the initial simulation, we don't need these side staircases. So let's go ahead and open up this subassembly, and then using the center of mass, I'm going to find and locate exactly where it's at. We can actually show this inside of SolidWorks and then use a 3D sketch to inference a relationship at that exact point. The idea behind this is then once we have that point sketch and we hide the center of mass, is we can use a local coordinate system to position it directly where that center of mass behaves. Now I'm going to create a configuration and call this something FEA or simulation and then suppress out all of the components that we don't need. Moving back to the top level assembly, we can start to toggle through all of these staircases, only leaving that coordinate system. I'll be able to bring in this design, use those local coordinate systems to establish a remote load, and apply those to our beams. One thing I do want to point out is using a remote load and connecting it to a beam isn't currently supported. You'll need to make sure you have a bracket that's going to be bonded to the beam that we can attach that remote load to. Just like that, we can go through and start to toggle through those configurations, reduce down the geometry size, and we'll be ready to go for sim. I hope I cured your CAD complexity syndrome. Now, with a little practice, these tips will become a part of your everyday tool set. Speeding up the workflow from CAD to simulation, and in return giving you a better understanding of the mechanics involved in your design. Now that we have the pre-processing -pre portion down, let's turn it over to the real pros and see what they have to say.